Hey everybody, today I want to walk you through my process of painting grass. Um, I feel like within the past maybe like year or two I've really kind of solidified how I paint grass and I just thought it would be very helpful if I share that with you. Um, I feel like at first glance a lot of times grass can be something that's a little bit intimidating because there's so many textures going on, so many different colors, so I just really want to break it down for you into like the three or four, maybe five steps that I use to um, create realistic looking grass. And behind me here, I have an absolutely beautiful commission that I've been working on recently. It's going to be a river in Iceland, um, and we've done a lot of the background landscape that includes like grass, foliage, um, it's very far in the distance and we're kind of working our way up towards the foreground on the left hand side and in the foreground there there's a lot of detailed grass and I'm about halfway through with it at the moment and I thought I would just kind of stop and show you each of the steps that I take to creating realistic grass. And I am very fortunate with this piece just purely because of the scale of the canvas. Um, it is a three by five foot canvas, so it's very, very large. Um, and there are several different benefits that I would say come along with working large. Um, the first of which is just the fact that if you're trying to achieve realism, you can fit so many details in a larger canvas that I find it's a whole lot easier to create a realistic painting um, as opposed to painting small. And then secondly, because of that, you can be very expressive with the brushwork that you're using, and I think that will come in handy a lot when painting grass. Um, you kind of sometimes just want to go a bit crazy with the texture. Um, but yeah, working large like this really allows you to be kind of very expressive and creative with your brushwork and still kind of achieve that realistic look. So that is just something to be aware of with this piece. Um, as opposed to kind of painting small, but just keep that in mind. We're now sat here in front of our painting, and the biggest piece of advice that I would give when it comes to painting grass is the importance of layering and building up texture. Um, what you don't want to do is kind of go directly in with your super, super fine detail. Um, I definitely think it's much better to build up to that. You know, you want to have a base layer, middle stages, and then details at the end. And right here, we kind of have a really great example of that because on the right hand side over here, I have kind of the base layer all set up. And then towards the bottom here, I have some of the in-between stages. And then at the top, in this kind of general area, is some of the refined detailed grass that I have painted in. First things first is the base layer, which can be seen right here. And I tend to use this layer as just kind of my shadow layer. Um, so I'll go within my reference and select one of the colors that is the darkest in kind of the general area that we're painting in and use that as a guide for my base. And a couple things, it doesn't all have to be one color. You can use multiple colors because sometimes the darkest spots in certain areas are lighter than other areas. And if you do use multiple colors, um, don't feel like you have to blend everything out to perfection. Um, I actually kind of like to leave a bit of brushiness. I think that helps add to the overall texture that we're trying to achieve. Once we finish up our base layer over here, um, we're gonna move on to the next phase of painting grass, which kind of is this bottom area right here, and it's just going to be some very general, broad details. Um, we're not going in yet to paint individual blades of grass. Um, I like to use kind of a medium-sized brush just to build up the shape and direction of the grass. For this, I like to choose kind of a middle range shade, um, and this is gonna depend on your own unique reference, but I like to choose a shade that's not the lightest, but not, not the darkest either. And like I said, we're just kind of building up the, the general direction of the grass, um, no fine detailing yet. And right now, because we have the base done over here, I am going to go ahead and add some of this detailing in, just to show you. So 
so that second step is now done. We've got some of that kind of general detail done in this area now, and maybe you can tell, um, but certain spots are kind of lighter than other spots. I also used several different colors. Um, there's more kind of orange colors up here, um, lots of like yellow ochre, and then down here it's a little bit more on the green side. Also, if there's a time to be a little bit more um, free and creative and expressive with your brushwork, now's a great time for that, um, especially if you're working large scale, large scale like this. Um, yeah, so go a bit crazy here if you want. Um, it's great for building up that texture. For step number three, um, we're kind of moving into the territory of painting individual blades of grass. As you can kind of see at the top here, um, I like to use a very kind of long brush, which I might show you up close in a second. Um, very thin, but very long bristles. Um, I find this great for grass, hair, things like that. Just really fine detail. Um, I like to use a, a bit of a lighter shade for this part, but what you can also do is if you feel like certain spots need a little bit more shadow still, um, you can use the same brush or a different brush that's about the same size and add some of those shadows back in as well. So we are about halfway through this step. Um, I forgot to mention, but this is going to be a very time consuming step, especially if you have a lot of grass like this. So kind of this portion, we've done a lot of detailing on. This still needs to be done over here. But a couple things that came to mind and that I want to mention is just be very, very aware of your reference and what sections um, kind of differ from other sections because most likely if you're painting a large field or a large area of grass it's not going to all be completely uniform um, like in this case i kind of had a lot of like very bright flowing grass in this area that's kind of all going in the same direction and then the middle portion right here is much darker it's a lot of just kind of tiny little um, irregular texture. Um, you don't kind of see the blades of grass like you see kind of throughout the rest of it, like up top and through here. So just be very aware of the different textures going on in your um, reference. Also, try to be very aware about using kind of a range of colors. Um, at the moment, I'm using five different colors um, to kind of complete this look and we still have a lot to go over there um, but in nature there's going to be a lot of different tones a lot of different colors um, yeah so using a kind of a wider variety is going to kind of help you create a more natural look for sure finally done with that step and I always forget how time consuming it is because I think I mean this is a big area don't get me wrong but I think this took me about five hours to do all of that detailing um, and we are finally on to the last step which is probably the funnest and the one that everyone looks forward to the most which is adding kind of tiny little highlights um, just final details flowers um, anything like little and additional, um, it just kind of like puts the cherry on top.
product covers it. Um, there's still a few things that I will be doing later. Um, there's a lot of like sticks throughout this area. And then also you might have noticed, but the rock here is just a base coat. Um, so I'll be going in and detailing that later. Um, but hopefully this just helps you understand the process that I use to paint grass a little bit more. Um, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up because it's very helpful for me. Um, and leave me a comment if you're interested in seeing any specific tutorials in the future. And I hope you guys have a great day.